Okay, I'm doing another video on my pre-rendering. This this is uh, Mortal Kombat 1. The thing about Mortal Kombat 1, you can get the game smooth. You can get the game smooth, but at the same time, you're gonna get the you're gonna get the hiccups. There's nothing you can do unless you can change the frequency of the uh, of the refresh rate that matches the screen. What happens is we have two different refresh rates. You got this. TV that's doing 60, and you got your game that's doing 37. Some games, like Mortal Kombat, you cannot overclock the. You cannot overclock. It's 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 stuck on it, you know. This is here's a problem. You see that? I cannot overclock the frequencies. This is why I can't. This is why. It's going to be jittery, you know. You have to match this. You have to turn it 60 because the TV is running 60 hertz. So you're going to give it quick hiccups. It's going to be smooth but hiccupy. That's why my pre-rendering does. It helps smooth that up as much as possible because it can try to put the frame that's missing 37 hertz, try to get the frame closest to that by, you know, I don't know. Something very complex I'm still learning by pre-rendering. What I mean by pre-rendering is this. I use, see I use old driver for my, for my, uh, my, go my video panel. You go to 3D settings. You want to turn all the filters off because all this stuff here, most of it, not all the most of it, it's not going to work for me. Depends. It might work for... I'm not talking about retro. Uh, I'm not roach. I'm not talking about retro roach. Who knows about that? But this is just from old main. So what I do is I turn on my texture filtering, uh, my triple buffering scene. Turn all those on. Force it on. And this, you set it to 4. Yours go up to 4. Mine goes up 8 because I have older driver. Yours can out. So that's your pre-rendering. Now, you want to go to River Tuner. Set, set, and, and set your pre render even more higher. This gives you more opening so you can set your pre render higher. Go here. It, it, makes, it makes things faster. It opens things faster. It makes your gun, uh, your, uh, uh, games run smoother. So it's set 8. I'm going to set it to uh, 13. Now, once I set my pre render, you want to turn this on. Always on. Let's set your uh, VSync pre-render. Then you go back up in here. This is River Tuner. It's a tuner for. It's a third-party free tuner, so you can overclock. You know, you have your overclocking here. You know, and so on. You know, you got your shaders. You got your memory overclocking. Everything. So now you go back again. Look how fast it, it loads. Cause the reason why my game loads fast. It's because that pre-render. The higher you pre-render, the faster things going to load, and, and uh, depending on your uh, on your processor too. But my processor is way too powerful for most games on this here. You know, it's reason why games run slow because I have overclocked them because they come standard with a cap with uh, Mame on it, so they cap it. But you have to you have to go beyond the cap, you know, to make it smooth again by overclocking. So what I'm doing is going to Mortal Kombat One. I mean, it, it's smooth already, you know, and that it's gonna be even more smoother now because I set my uh, Mortal Kombat one. I set my pre-render so it can try to make up for. You see how fast it loaded? It reloaded fast because of that pre-render. If you know that pre-render is what makes your games load faster. You see how fast that is? I can slow that loading time uh, from here if I. If I turn down my pre-render to uh, back to normal, then there would be slow lowdowns and slow open, slow opening. Um, you know, if I want to, I overclock this game too. Just another overclock. I can overclock. See, this is the CPU one overclock, three sixty-five. And here's another one. Uh, here's another one, CPU two. So you gotta be careful because these CPUs have other integrative uh, processors, and you could make you. Uh, Volume faster, you can make it slower. Depends which core you are on. It's gonna be um, 
how fast and stuff. I'm still pre-scaling it because I can get the, the, the graphics. I can make it uh, perfect. Right now, I'm still working on a pre-scaling the uh, pixels. So that's what it does right now. You know, this is where I'm at. I'm still working overclocking, still on the rough, but I'm gonna, it, it gets a lot more smoother than this. So what I'm going to do again, go back out and pre-scale it. Back out again. Now I'm going to pre-scale it, you know, because it's digital. And one of the most hardest things for uh, any type of, uh, 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 what do you call it? any type of, um, I'm pre-scaling the pixels. This is not your regular scale, where it doesn't go 640 by whatever. This, this actually changes the size of your pixels. So you go up to 10 size or to 1. So I pre-scaled that. Turn off. All this is turned off because I have it on my video card settings. If you turn all this on, you're going to lose all your fluid. You're going to lose all your animation because you're syncing it too many times. Here's another thing. If you want to hide all your uh, all your defects, you know, like all the bad defects, you have two types here, you know. You have a display. Set, you have a display here. I might just... Uh, I don't know, this might change it, might not, but then you have display here. This is very important because this is your TV. So what I'm going to do now is bring this down. I'm bringing a screen down to one here because it's going to hide, it's going to make the back really dark so it can hide all the jagging. And I want to make this, uh, that low and this a little bit higher so they go opposite. So one's pulling it, making it darker and one's making it brighter. So you're kind of pulling away. So once you do that, you want to go advance. Now you're going that this is your game. That was your that's your uh that's your um main TV. Now this is gonna be your this is gonna be your game. So game is gonna be very close to it, but you can you know, but down to five, whatever. So you wanna do that. So now you're gonna hide it even more because you're doing your background, your overall TV, then you're gonna do the front layering, that's gonna be your game. Then uh, you have your TV setting, whatever. So it goes on. If you, you know, so if you want to get really nutty, this there's three different types, three different types of. Um, so if I really want to, uh, so I done those two type of settings. So it really hides. It tries to hide it. I'm still have to do my pre-scaling. My pre-scaling and filtering is too big for the pixels right now. Now now I'm gonna do my third. Okay, this is gonna be my third. So you got three different. Um, you actually got four. You actually got four different types of, uh, of of five different price. I have five different types of uh, uh, five different uh, brightness layers, different programs. So this is this. So if I'm gonna change my brightness to fine tuning, I go to this. Now I can set my fine tuning. This does not. This uh, what I know of. This does not. Let me find it. See a brightness? This is a whole different one right here. This can, uh, see how I just turn this up. So I'm doing this hiding more. See, it gives it more brightness. So you got, that's three different ways already to change your brightness to really help. Well, it does, it hides all the jitter. It hides all the uh, jacks, you know, because you, you know, that's how you have to do it. Coloring and, and highlighting and hiding the effective by using colors and brightness on top of your scan lines and everything else. So everything has to go hand in hand. Pre-scaling pixels to your scan lines. So you, you know, you don't want to see your scan lines to, you know, to some point. You want to see them, but they'll have to be in the background. If you're going to do too much scan line, it's just going to over pixelize, you know, that situation. So you're not going to get a perfect end here. Here's, a, you know, Here's another perfect example that you cannot, you know, here's another perfect example uh, you cannot overclock. You're always going to get jitters, you know. Here's another jittery game. It's going to be NBA Jam. This is why you get the jitters because uh, it's stuck on one thing. You can't. NBA Jam. You see? NBA Jam right here. So if I go to like this one, and if I go, it's just, if I go to, uh, Set my refresh rate, it's stuck on 37, so you're gonna always get that jitter. You can get a smooth game, it's the game's smoother as hell, depending on your TV and if you can match, you know. But at the same time, again, it's stuck here, you cannot change that on this on, on this main. So if you can turn that to 60 hertz, turn that to 60 hertz, man, this game would blow, this game would be amazing. But I cannot overclock 
the frequencies on this game besides I can down clock it but who wants to do that but I want to show you another example of Mortal Kombat that you can overclock so you can have smooth the Mortal Kombat 3 you can overclock I'm gonna show you that right now because it's it starts out as it oh uh, here here's here's a more perfect example where some games you can overclock the refresh and some you can't okay let me see Here's Mortal Kombat 3. You see Mortal Kombat 3. See, here's the thing. This is default right here. 3A. You see, 54 hertz. This word's default. Now I can overclock that to 60 hertz. See how I'm cloaking? Now it's 60 hertz. I mean, 0.707 is not going to make a big difference because it can't, you know, I mean, if you can match it that perfect, that's great, but it's not. It's going to get 100% smooth gameplay. There's no more jitters or anything because both, uh, I said both uh, refresh our sync perfectly. Get a 60 hertz TV with a 60 hertz game. Now you run a 120 hertz TV with a 60 hertz game, you're going to get jitters because it's not match for that. You know, you're going, you know, there's difference between ghosting jitters and processing. Uh, processor issues compared to your TV refresh. You know, I still have to work on the graphics for this game because I still have to, it's too over bright and, and there's so many, I have to fix all the defects on it. I can do that. This is a perfect game you can fit, have 100% uh, scaled to it so it will be smooth. So, now a beautiful game you can actually run smooth. Hit play. You got your guys 100% smooth. There's no jitters, there's no weird stuff. Because it's running perfectly. 60 hertz. It's my phone's jittering because my phone's running 30 hertz frames per second, while my my uh, CRT is running 60. So you going that phone's going to jitter like crazy. See how nice it, it's pretty. It's 100 percent smooth. There's no jerking, no jitters. I have to. On my side, you cannot see the jag lines. The jag lines are gone. But on the phone, you won't see the jagged lines because there's no scan lines on the phone. So the scan lines on the TV uh, on the um, monitor is not going to make up for it. Scan lines on on the phone, so it it, it might. It, so you're going to get a little bit more rough. But yeah, this game's hundred percent smooth. It's hundred percent lined up. Almost, you know, if you know, to a point where you can't even notice it with all the pixels. It's very smooth. The game runs smooth. So uh, what I'm showing is that some of these games, reason why a lot of times when you get emulators, you know, and, and some of these games are jerky like that because your emulators are running at 37 hertz. Because I think they take the same um, same ROM files from, you know, MAME or that's on, 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 on the uh, internet, been around for years, and they just they just make ver different version of... of uh, MAME and stuff to run it different ways, and they make it you know, different version of MAME run it better. They might have to hack the game a little bit more because sometimes there's uh, protection and they allow you to play the game, but you may not get blood without you know without uh, hacking it right. You know, so it all depends on MAME. You know, but the reason why all MAME and all your emulators run like crap when you when you're running old MK1, MK2. NBA Jam because it's stuck at 37 hertz. If you can match the hertz to your emulator, there would be there's no like jerks every second. You'd be running jerk, running jerk, running jerk. Game's running smooth. Oh wow, it's glass is smooth, but why is it a little bit of jerk? Because 37 is not running 60. So I just want to base touch on why certain games, you know, you can't really do much. Only time you can do that if you can decom if you can throw. The ROM and a, and a compiler, a disassembler, you can disassemble that into code and you can find the code that runs 37. You can permanently put 60 hertz and you can and recompile that ROM back again. Then you can run a game, game more combat smooth. But it's the 37 hertz that's going to stop you. It's not, most likely, it's not your computer. 